Hi there. So we're going to talk really quickly about the groups and structures on the periodic table. So first of all, things that go across rows, we don't call them rows, we call them periods. And the rows are ordered by atomic number. You'll notice the no atomic number increases. And then the columns on a periodic table we call groups or families. And everything in a column, um, a group or a family, has similar chemical properties. As you can see from this slide, most of the atoms on the periodic table are um, solids. There are only a couple of liquids, two exactly. Uh, mercury and bromine are the only two that are liquids at room temperature. And then these green ones, these are the things that are gases at room temperature. And I don't know why it's not colored this way, but hydrogen should also be a gas at room temperature. So it should have been green on this slide. All right, so the first division that you need to know about is you need to know the difference between metals and nonmetals. And so if you'll pay attention to this black stair step line that's on your periodic table that I gave you in class, everything that's to the left of that line, including the inner transition metals at the bottom, are metals. The only exception to that is hydrogen. Hydrogen is grouped over here with these other elements, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And here are some properties of metals. Um, I'll let you read them, but mostly um, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. On the other side of that stair step line is what we call the nonmetals. And this is where you'll see hydrogen is now grouped in with the nonmetals. <laughs> And nonmetals are lousy conductors of electricity and heat, so we say they're good insulators. Elements that touch the stair step line, so all these ones in green here, are what we call semimetals, or sometimes we call them metalloids, and sometimes we call them semiconductors. And so you have to be able to identify them. They are the elements that touch the stair step, with the exception of aluminum. Aluminum is most definitely a real, honest-to-goodness metal. Um, it is not a semi-metal at all. Um, we do have this group of atoms that we call the representative elements. And they're kind of like, they're the elements that follow patterns, and they tend to follow the rules of the periodic table. They include the first two columns and the last six columns. Um, sometimes we'll refer to these as the group A elements. And on the periodic table that I gave you in class, their columns are all titled with a number with A. Um, and they are representative because they include all different kinds of atoms. The middle of your periodic table that does not, it's not part of the representative elements, these are what we call the transition metals. I often refer to these as the ill-behaved or the naughty um, elements on the periodic table because they don't tend to follow the rules. So these are called the transition metals and they form this, where all the columns that are short, these are the transition metals. Inside the transition metals, we have another group. And so I don't know if you can tell, but these elements, this whole series here, actually squeezes in between the periodic table right in here. So it fits in that little slot. These we call the inner transition metals because they are actually inside this other group of transition metals. And now we get into some actual family names. This very first column, with the exception of hydrogen, because hydrogen is not a metal, these are called the alkali metals. Alkali. Now it turns out that the alkali metals are some of the most reactive metals on the periodic table. As a matter of fact, these are so reactive that um, if you put them with water, um, when you get down here into potassium or rubidium, these things are explosive with water. So. Um, they're also, because they are so reactive, you don't ever find them pure in nature. They're always bonded to something else. Next to the alkali metals are the alkaline earth metals. So we call these the alkaline earth metals because they still tend to form um, a basic, you know, not acid, but basic um, solutions in water. But these are things that we oftentimes find in the earth's crust and the sea. And so column two is the alkaline earth metals. Way over on the other hand side, um, the next to the last column, these are the halogens. And just like the alkali metals, the halogens are highly reactive and you'll never find them um, by themselves in nature. Also, um, with these things, all of their names end with I-N-E. So this is fluorine, 
chlorine, bromine. This is iodine. Um, some in England, they call it iodine and astatine. And so that kind of helps you identify that it's a halogen because it's, they all sound the same. And then on the far right hand side of the periodic table, we have the noble gases. These noble gases are sort of like the royalty, that's why we call them no noble, or the stars of the periodic table. Every other atom on the periodic table wants to look like one of these atoms on the outside. And um, <clears throat> that's why they're so special. Um, just a little quick note, down here in the inner transition metals, this first row, and it's unusual, we don't usually give names to rows on a periodic table, we usually give names to columns, but this row is called the lanthanides, and the reason they're called the lanthanides is because this is where the inner transition metals fit in, and they follow this element right here, and this, the name of this element is lanthanum. So these are the lanthanides, they follow lanthanum, and then this row underneath the lanthanides is called the actinides, and that's because they follow actinium. And all of the actinides are radioactive, every single one of them. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, come by and see me or shoot me an email.